ஹாய் ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் வெல்கம் டு எம்எஸ்கே அஃபிஷியல் யூடியூப் சேனல் ஸோ மை நேம் இஸ் எம் செந்தில் குமார் ஐ ஹாவ் டோட்டலி தேர்ட்டீன் இயர்ஸ் ஆஃப் எக்ஸ்பீரியன்ஸ் இன் மெயின் ஃப்ரேம் டெக்னாலஜி ஐ எம் ஒர்க்கிங் ஆஸ் ஏ ப்ராஜெக்ட் மேனேஜர் நவ் ஸோ திஸ் இஸ் மை ஃபர்ஸ்ட் வீடியோ இன் மெயின் ஃப்ரேம் டெக்னாலஜி வேர் ஐ எம் கோயிங் டு எக்ஸ்பிளைன் யூ in this video about the endeavor basics hope you all know what is endeavor so if you do not know you can able to understand the basics and what is the purpose of endeavor and how how can we use endeavor in our mainframe technology under the software development life cycle process okay so please feel free to post your comments whatever the comments you have after this video in the comments box i will reply to your all your questions immediately when you post a comment so this is my first video into the mainframe technology i ju- i'm just starting it with endeavor uh, tool so going forward you will be receiving more videos from my side but i just want to know how efficient my teaching is for you to understand the basics which i am going to explain for endeavor in this first video so if you like it and based upon your comments i will try to post more videos on regular basis to make you easily understand the mainframe technology the languages cobol jcl vsam db2 cacs rex pl1 assembler and the other tools like endeavor expeditor so i am going to uh, post first all the videos related to endeavor this is my part 1 video starting with basics so let's move on to the concept okay so is endeavor so what is endeavor endeavor is a software configuration management tool it is a scm tool people will call it as scm tool scm stands for software configuration management so from the description or the abbreviation you can able to clearly understand what is the purpose of this endeavor tool so you can you able to develop your software from the scratch newly or you can able to uh modify the existing software the software in the sense from the technology perspective i am saying we can build a software by developing a programs so i am referring to the programs so this tool will help us to create a new program or modify the existing programs or alter from and we can move from one stage to several stages so let us let me explain the basics in detail for you let me go to the next screen so here you see endeavor is here is an integrated set of management tools for automating controlling and monitoring the mainframe software development life cycle so it easily states that it is one of your software configuration management tool to automate to control and monitor the mainframe software development life cycle so you will be developing the programs and it is it will be based upon the stages you will move from stage 1 to stage 2 to stage 3 to stage 4 and finally you will build a uh, very efficient that can a software that can be installed into the production so you can monitor the each stage whenever it moves from one stage to another stage when you are developing that mainframe software that's what monitoring you can control it whenever it will be under your id if you are making some changes to your program it will be the access will be under your id so you can able to control it you can whenever if you want to modify it you can change the program you can alter the program you can update delete whatever you wish you can do based upon the features that are available in endeavor next endeavor is to maintain software applications and track their versions so you are going to create a program and you are going to upgrade it i mean you're going to add it to the endeavor 
software tool. Once you add it, again, if there is a change in the project requirement, you can able to make some additional changes. And again, you will be adding the program to the entire At that time, it will create a new version. Since at the first time when you add the program to the endeavor, it will create one version, version 1.0. The next time it will create 1.1, 1.2, like that it will goes on. So that is what it has been told. Endeavor is used to maintain software applications and track their versions. The third point is in the endeavor, source code and related code objects are known as elements. So the program which contains its literally a source code. If we are writing in the COBOL programming language or it's a CACS or whatever the, the mainframe related programming language it can be. It can be a, a program, it can be a copy book, the different types of uh, mainframe components. So those are related as elements. Those are called as elements. So an element is a partition dataset member that has been placed under the control of Endeavor. So, so we, we will create a program in a PDS. After we create the from a PDS, we will be adding it to the Endeavor. Even that module in the Endeavor also, it will be under a particular PDS which are specifically used for the purpose of Endeavor. That also will be in the PDS mem uh, member of PDS uh, partition data set only. Uh, so like we will be adding it from our personal own PDS from to the endeavor. So the, even the when you once you add it to the endeavor, it will still remain in the endeavor owned endeavor region specific partition data sets PDS. Okay, so that's what it has been told. So don't need to confuse about that and. The element is the smallest object for which the product provides control. So element is, any, when you initially create it, it's one of the smallest object. And from each stage it moves on. So it will be developed as and when required based upon the project requirement changes. It can be a smallest object initially and can become a biggest object or it can have huge number of lines of code, can have minimal line of number of lines of code. So like that, that's what they refer to. So we can control the entire uh, element throughout the software development life cycle. Let me go to the next screen. So during the software development life cycle, the user performs element actions on elements such as add, update, move, delete, sign out and so on. So during the software development life cycle, the user performs elements and actions on. See, whenever uh, in Endeavor, if people who are know the basics of Endeavor, or if even if you don't know the basics, uh, the perform the operation that we are going to perform, right? So we will be creating some programs. So initially, first time, as I told you earlier, we will be adding it to the Endeavor through using the add option, and we will be updating it whenever you're going to make some alter again based upon the requirement changes for your project. Whenever the client gives a new up, new changes, right, we'll be upgrading it the, with the existing uh, code, source codes. So at that time, use the update option to update the added module. The next third is when you move it from the one region to another region, and it's for delete. If you don't want to uh, uh, have the component in the endeavor, the element in the endeavor, you can be able to delete it. Sign out is something like, you can be able to sign out the element. I mean, whenever you are getting some module uh, which is already pr present in the production, so you will be fetching it from the production to uh, your development uh, personal library. At that time, you can be able to sign out that module from the production to your ID. So it will be placed you your personal PDS or the project specific PDS, but the element will be signed out to your ID so that. Uh, the other people cannot be able to directly update the module or add the module without your permission. So like, like that, there are a lot of options in this software development life cycle. The user can perform elements in the Endeavor. So these functions can be performed in foreground or batch mode. You can do it in the online or in the batch mode through which we will be submitting the, uh, the corresponding uh, task through a JCL. So that's what it's foreground or batch mode. So I'll just show the uh, image in the next slides. So you'll be able to understand clearly. 
so many functions can be executed in foreground but submitted for batch processing so even though uh, you it will feel like you are performing something in the online but in the background it will be submitted for the batch processing it will not be known to you but you can able to do most of the things most of the functionalities in the foreground but the in the meanwhile in the background it will be submitted for the batch processing so all jcl batch functions are described using the software control language this is very important scl it is like a cobol like statement so so all the jcl batch functions right i mean the functions which are not done through foreground or this that can that will be created like a software control language i mean it is something like a cobol like language through which the endeavor can able to understand what kind of function the user wants to perform so it will be uh, in that format so that format or that language is called software control language it is nothing but something like cobol like english language only so scl is the endeavor free form language with english like statements that is used for batch execution so whatever i told you now right so the same thing they told it is a endeavor free form language it's like english like statements like cobol which is used for the batch execution and it will be understandable by the uh, endeavor so this is very important concept you you, will, you can able to uh, uh, get this questions in the end uh, in your interview time also what is scl like that they will ask so it's scl stands for software control language okay so let's go to the next slide so this is the endeavor screen so how it will look like so here you can see you can have the foreground option option 2 is for foreground option 3 is for batch so if you give the option 2 it will take you to the list of options that are available under foreground where you, where you can able to add update or delete the modules those so on so on the third option is for batch processing in that also you can able to perform the same thing but through which the jobs will be submitted okay the other options you can able to i will just explain in the next upcoming videos so you will just try to understand whatever that has been taught in this video it will be easy for you to uh, pick it up in the next upcoming videos so this is what the slide let me go to the next slide so this is the next slide where under the foreground option the previous slide you saw in the figure 2 it will come take you to the foreground option under foreground option we have display add or update retrieve delete these options are available under foreground option so the display it is it will display the element details so add or update it's used to add an element to endeavor retrieve is to retrieve an element from the production or other test regions so generate is used to generate uh, so i will just explain that in the next slides i mean the next upcoming videos i'm sorry so this is a delete an element for delete command then print is to print the elements or whatever the changes or whatever the change history that has for that particular element so sign in is something like explicitly sign in an element i mean you may sign out an element from the production and if you want to explicitly sign in that element again to endeavor you can able to do that option using that sign in okay so these are the options so this is the as this is the first videos related to the endeavor basics so i'm just telling you on high level the detail level of each and uh, every functionality under this foreground and uh, batch processing will be covered in the upcoming videos of this endeavor tool let me go to the next screen so if you see the typical software life cycle what is the typical software life cycle of a project whatever you are working right in irrespective of whatever the it company you are working on the software life cycle remains same across all the companies uh, or for all the projects so you can see you can automate and control the movement of software through your software life cycle software life cycles are site specific a typical software life cycle consists of the following stages okay so you can hope you can able to easily understand it's just like a single simple english direct statements okay so uh, whenever you get a new project uh you're working on your project you're going to create a new modules or you're going to uh, i mean module in the sense i'm saying the programs when you're going you're going to create a new programs or or you're going to work on some existing programs 
uh, which is already present in the production at the time you will fetch the programs from the endeavor into your development i mean the test libraries uh, i mean your personal libraries or the project specific development libraries i mean the libraries in the sense the pds uh, i am referring to partition data set so all the application in the sense the programs okay what are the programs that you are going to make create or modify for your uh, project which you are going to work on so that is called applications so that will come at the first development stage the next thing once you are developed you are going to do the testing for that that is called at the test unit testing region which will be done by the developer the third one is quality assurance qa testing which will be where the system testing will be done like the system integration testing the user acceptance testing sit uat Uh, apart from uh, once you once the developer done with the unit testing the other two testings the which are i told sit and uat that will be done under the qa region the fourth thing is emergency this emergency this stage is particularly used whenever there is a severe production issue which is impacting the application the production application many customers are impacted at that time when you want to make some emergency fix you will directly from the production directly you will you will get the elements to your emergency read stage you will make the changes you will fix all the required changes and then again you will move it to the production code that's what it is told emergency fixes are applied to production code in this stage so final thing is once you done with all the regions cross from the development it will go to the you will do the unit testing then it will go to the qa region for system uh, integration testing user acceptance testing everything it's crossed finally it will goes to the production where we will install all our project changes into the production where it will go live for the customers to experience it hope you understand it everyone knows this the next thing is the change procedures the typical change procedures that the product managers involves the following activities the, the main in endeavor these are the main procedures or the product which is offering for the developers first thing is retrieving element from the production to a development library first you will whenever you get a project if you are going to for example if you are going to make changes to the programs a b and c first you will fetch those programs a b and c from the production library uh, i mean in endeavor everything will be present in the pds only so even the production the, the programs uh, source code will be present in the production library from there through endeavor you will you will retrieve it from the production to the development library the second thing is you will make changes to the element once you retrieve it in your development library you will make the required changes as per the requirement given by the client the third one you will adding or updating elements to the test stage so once you done with the changes as per the project specific requirements uh, or the design document you will add the module or you will one or if after you added the module again you are going to make some changes you will be updating the elements into that test stage then once you done with the test stage you develop, once the developer completes the unit testing it will be moved to the qa region where you will do the sit and uat testing and then finally the elements will be moved back into the production so this is the the picture which will uh, easily make you understand what we explained orally now so see this is the final stage the production stage so whenever you get a new project if it is an exist the, the modules are already present in the production so you are directly fetch the modules i'm sorry I'm sorry so you will directly fetch the modules from the production to the development library which we saw in the last slide so after that you will make some changes you will add or update to the test region from the test region it will be moved to the qa region quality assurance where the sit uh, system integration testing and user acceptance testing will be done then finally it will be moved from the qa directly to the production so emergency stage is only for whenever there is a emergency situation where you need to apply immediate changes and move it to the production at that time only this one will be applicable so that's what it has been explained in the below text okay so let me go to the next slide 
So this is for the emergency operation which I told, retrieve elements from production, make changes to the element, add or update elements directly to the emergency stage. So you will not go from the, uh, the test stage and then QEA, nothing will be done directly. You retrieve it from the production, make the changes, directly you add it to the emergency stage, from there directly you move it to the production. Okay. So this is what the, the picture shows. So we will not be touching this test or QA regions. So from the production, we will retrieve it to the library, the maintenance library where we will make the corresponding code changes. We will add or update to the emergency region, emergency stage. Uh, from there, we will be moving it directly to the production again. So this is a cycle which will be uh, processed or taken care whenever there is a production severity one issue which is impacting many customers and when, it's, when there is a huge loss for the clients. So at that time, this kind of emergency fix will be carried out in all the projects across the IT companies. So this is what uh, uh, the illustration for emergency process or procedure. Okay guys, yeah, that's what I'm done with the Endeavor basics. Hope you understand whatever I explained till now from the starting of this endeavor all the screen they explained thank you so much for giving me an opportunity to teach you all kindly post your valuable comments in my youtube channel kindly subscribe to my channel i will try to post more videos like regarding to this endeavor tool part two part three and so on till the entire endeavor tool is taught to you I and uh, i will try to post more videos regarding the cobol jcl vsam all the other mainframe languages also thank you so much guys stay safe and healthy during this covid 19 pandemic bye